And we're going to start off with Satnam Singh, Dave, who debuted with AEW following the main event where Samoa Joe won the Ring of Honor title from... Um, TV title. Uh, TV title from Minoru Suzuki. And then we had a uh, a debut. And this ties into the Time Warner, uh, I guess the whole Discovery Time Warner deal. Yeah, well, I mean, it's it's basically uh, the same thing WWE did with Jinder Mahal. You know, they're trying to do something for in, uh, for um, India, and uh, so um, AEW has a television deal with Eurosport India, which is owned by Discovery. So now that Discovery um, is kind of uh, you know it will merged with Time Warner, you know, and they're kind of in they're, they're putting their people in charge. Uh, they, you know, AEW decided to run an angle for, you know, or Tony Khan decided to run an angle to build up the India market. So that was the whole deal there is, um, to put, uh, uh, Singh and Jay Lethal and Sanjay Dutt together as a group. And I guess the, you know, really promote Dutt who can speak the language and Singh who can speak the language and have them, you know, promote, uh, you know, really get into promoting the brand in India. So that was the reason for the end of the show. Um, you know, it was very interesting because they did, you know, essentially his debut was so similar to over the years, so many giants that WWE has used from, um, you know, uh, the great Kali and giant Gonzalez and you can go right down the list almost, you know, who actually is getting more of a push than, um, well, not really. I mean, it's the same basic push that they all get. Um, and, uh, yeah, that was that it was, uh, nobody really understood it. Um, but that's the reason behind it, it was it's, it was an angle for the India market and, uh, you know, um, and for discovery, and uh, to solidify themselves with Discovery. Well, it's weird because it wasn't only the debut with the lights out and a guy that nobody had any idea who he was and a very WWE-style angle, but there's all the talk about the overrun, and I'm not a huge fan of overruns at all. I think that you should be able to get everything you need to get done in your two hours, but uh, there was a lot of talk about an overrun, and then it was two minutes, so I'm not sure... I don't know. It's kind of weird to promote it that hard and then just do a two-minute overrun for that. Yeah. yeah. Well, the reason was for that, but yeah, the um, it is kind of weird. I mean, as far as I I like the idea of an overrun on rare occasions. I mean, NXT does it every week. I have no idea why. Um, just USA lets them do it, and it's the USA decision. Um, it's not a highly rated show, so I, you know whatever. I'm glad Raw doesn't do it because three hours is more than enough. Um, I think for AEW, it would be good to do it on occasion when you have a main event. Um, and just, you know, like, because everyone knows the main event's going to end at the top of the hour, but not necessarily announce it ahead of time. But I guess the feeling is, is they want to announce it ahead of time because if you don't, people may not like have their DVRs ready or whatever like that. Although I know with like my DVR, it, it, you know, even if, you know, it, it was automatically going to, it was go automatically going to record that extra two minutes anyway, uh, because that was the length of the show. So it was like it went over the length. But I think like if you're treating something like a sport event and you're always over it at, at the top of the hour, every now and then you should have a good match that goes past the top of the hour, a couple minutes. But yeah, it's weird because it's like, I mean, they had to cram a lot of stuff in. I mean, they didn't do much in the way of interviews tonight. They had so many matches. And, uh, so they went a little bit over, you know, you know, and I guess that was, you know, to call attention to everything. It was to do that. But, uh, it didn't really get over in the building, um, because nobody knew who the guy was. Um, I mean, I, what I thought was interesting was that the, this is not the way WWE would do it was, with WWE would do it, they would be like, who is this guy? What's going on? This guy looks like he's nine feet tall. They would be doing all that, right? And with AEW, it was just Tony Schiavone going, I know this guy. You know, I've seen him train. You know, and he knew who he was. And uh, 
talked about his background, you know, the minute the minute they saw him. So it was like the announcers were not playing dumb and the announcers were there to actually tell the viewer what was going on as opposed to, you know, the way of like trying to make it this big surprise. Who's this giant guy? Oh, my God. You know, and, and A.W. had announced back in September his signing um, and he had been training, um, you know, um, with the, I guess with QT, right? I would presume so. I mean, they they uh, said he was uh, training with. I guess they said under the tutelage of Sanjay Dutt. I believe they said, but I'm sure he's been training with QT and everybody. Well, how long has Sanjay Dutt been with the company? It's only been uh, two, three months. Yeah, and this guy this guy started in September, so he was training with you know with somebody before. So, so Sanjay is going to be with him to you know um, you know. Well, I mean, they're part of the group, and I guess they're going to feud with Joe. And uh, it's part of, you know, Joe and Jay Lethal's feud. So that, um, which, we, which you know, if you watch the TV and you watch the Ring of Honor pay-per-view, I mean, it was pretty obvious that Joe and Jay Lethal were going to be doing a program. But the other big thing is is that uh, he announced, uh, or the, on the show they announced that Tony Khan's going to have a, another major announcement on Wednesday. So we're going to have a week of speculation of what this could be, um, whether it could be, uh, an, they didn't say a new signing. Uh, they said a major announcement, so maybe this is the streaming deal that we're that's been talked about. Maybe it's something with to do with Ring of Honor, um, as far as you know, a, some sort of a broadcast deal for them. Um, we'll have to wait and see. I mean, he he is signing, he is signing guys for Ring of Honor, so he's got to be pretty confident he's going to be doing something with them. So, uh, you know, I mean, I guess that's that could be that that could very well be what it is. Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.